Hello everyone, it's me Samuel Taylor Aykroyd and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first trip report on an aircraft. Right now I am at Edinburgh Airport and today I'm going to be flying to Stockholm Arlanda Airport with Norwegian Air on board one of their Boeing 737-800 aircraft. This will be my first time flying with Norwegian Air so hopefully things go well and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Norwegian Air are like and uh, this is actually my first flight on an aircraft in almost three years so hopefully it goes well and I hope you all enjoy the report. After filming my intro we headed towards the entry doors nearest to the check-in desks and the Airlink bus stop. Upon entering you can see the check-in desks but as we were travelling with just hand luggage, we were able to head up the escalator to security. There are also lifts if needed. Once you get upstairs, before security, there are toilets, a WH Smith which was closed at the time of recording, a Weatherspoon restaurant and a Cafe Nero. Security took about 10 to 15 minutes to clear and after security there is a corridor you have to walk through which leads to the duty free and the corridor offers some nice views of the airport tower, car park and the bus stops. The duty free section has a pretty good selection of alcoholic drinks, sweets and last minute gifts and the duty free section isn't that big either and it basically goes in the shape of an oval. I didn't buy anything from the duty free store so we continued on towards the departure lounge which has a decent selection of shops and restaurants. We headed to the All Bar 1 restaurant for a late lunch. I opted for a glass of lemonade and some fish and chips which were good. Something else you will see in the restaurants as well as around the rest of the airport are a lot of departure boards. Located near the All Bar 1 restaurant and next to Gate 5 is the British Airways and Aspire Lounge which are the two lounges at Edinburgh Airport. After my meal I spent time wandering around the airport and saw that there was a pretty good selection of shops and restaurants available. I also noticed a shop selling mostly Harry Potter merchandise which is appropriate to be at Edinburgh Airport as some of the places in the books were inspired by Edinburgh. There is also very clear signage at the airport for gates, toilets, arrivals area and more so it's easy to get around and find where to go. Something to bear in mind is that after passing gate 17 there isn't that many shops, there will only be a WH Smith. Same with passing gate 5 where the two lounges are but there are some vending machines in that area and another WH Smith. Despite the lack of shops being around gates 1 to 4, there are plenty of windows providing good views of the car park, people arriving to the airport and the tower. There are also some great views of the airport's apron and the runway from some of the gates in the middle of the airport. After a few hours our aircraft arrived on its inbound flight from Stockholm Arlanda Airport and pulled up onto gate 15. 
The aircraft arrived 11 minutes behind schedule at 8.06 p.m., meaning the TAR flight was delayed. Today's aircraft is registered Sierra Echo Romeo Romeo Foxtrot, an 11-year-old Boeing 737-800. Currently just sitting at gate 15 just now and I have a pretty good view of our aircraft and the passengers disembarking from the inbound flight. Really looking forward to this flight, especially since I haven't flown in almost three years and I'm excited to see what Norwegian Air have to offer. Not long after the aircraft arrived and the inbound passengers disembarked, it was time for us to board. However, it was one of those times where you have your boarding pass checked, start walking through the gate and then have to wait another 5 to 10 minutes before actually boarding. But after that, it was actually time for us to board the way that us av geeks like to board, from the tarmac and up some stairs. And now for the taxi and takeoff. from runway 06 at Edinburgh Airport at 9.03pm, 28 minutes behind schedule, and soon after we are making a right turn heading north where you can see the fourth bridges, or at least just the lights on them, as it's dark, but after climbing through some clouds we had some blue sky which did eventually end for the night. The legroom was brilliant for someone around 6 foot, which is what I expect from an extra legroom seat which is what I was sat on for the flight, and is seat 1A. The seat back pocket contains the safety card and buy on board menu. It also has room to store a few belongings as long as they can fit. Here is the safety card. The buy on board menu also has a decent selection of food and drinks available, as well as the duty free. I opted for a can of Fanta which was the only thing I ordered on this flight. The aircraft is equipped with mood lighting and the sky interior which is a nice touch. These seats also have tray tables that fold out from where the armrest is and also has the functions for where the older in-flight entertainment once was and it's kind of strange to see this on an aircraft that's 11 years old. The button next to those functions is for the seat's recline, however, the recline isn't particularly good. The cabin lights were turned off during the flight so the passengers could get a bit of sleep if they wanted to, which is good of the flight attendants to do. Even though it may be hard to see in this shot, each seat has its own air conditioning and reading light, and they both worked well. The restrooms were also in good working order and were clean, and someone who is around 6 foot tall will be able to fit in here, but my head was still rather close to the ceiling. I spent most of the flight just relaxing and looking out the window, and I also snacked on some Pringles which I got at the airport. We soon start descending into Orlando Airport, and even though it's dark, there are still some nice views from the windows, even if it is just of the lights on the ground during the night. All in all, a pretty good flight, especially for the price of the ticket, which by the way was £30.20 for a low fare ticket, £19 for an extra legroom seat selection at the front, £7 for a cabin bag, £13 for Air Travel Duty International and £16 for passenger service. That's a total of £85.20. And, and with low cost carriers, the only thing I really expect them to do well is to simply deliver me from A to B. 
and Norwegian managed to do that with no problems whatsoever on this flight. We land onto Arlanda Airport's runway 01 left at 11.53pm, which is only 3 minutes behind schedule. And it was only a short taxi to the gate at Terminal 5, and after disembarking we headed to passport control, which was easy and quick to clear. And after that we had to walk to Terminal 4 to catch our bus to the jumbo stay, and there is plenty of signage for everything at Arlanda Airport, including the terminals and we managed to find our way to the bus stops to catch our bus to the jumbo stay which will be toured in the next video. So that was my trip with Norwegian Air from Edinburgh to Stockholm Arlanda Airport and the flight was very good, the seats were very comfortable, the crew were very friendly and Norwegian Air are definitely a great airline, they have done me proud and I'm looking forward to flying with them again in a few days which will be in a future trip report. So thank you all so much for watching this video, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video which will be my tour of the Jumbo Stay. Bye!